Welcome to the Phone Suite Console Training Series. These videos are organized to allow you to view the entire series in five short lessons, or to jump to or view only the sections you need to to begin using the console. This is lesson one, getting to know your Phone Suite Console. The remaining lessons are basic call handling, basic guest settings and functions, advanced call handling, and advanced guest settings and functions. Your phone suite console is more than just a phone. Although it is useful for answering and transferring calls, it is also the simplest tool available for verifying or changing guest and phone settings. Before learning to use the phone suite console, let's get familiar with it. The phone suite console has several separate parts to it. We'll look at each of these in detail later, but let's get a quick view of them now. The left of the console are the handset and cradle. This is where the handset rests when you are not using it to talk. To the right of the handset is the busy lamp field an array of lights that indicate which phones or lines are in use. Below the busy lamp field are the guest function buttons. These are used to check or set many of phone suites unique guest and room settings. At the top right of the console is a small display that changes depending on what you are doing with the console at each moment. Surrounding it are four call buttons used to answer calls, to make calls, and to place callers on hold. Below the display is a standard phone keypad. The keypad is used when making calls, transferring calls, or entering information in guest settings. To the right of the keypad are a unique set of keys labeled A, B, C, and D. These are also known as the command keys and are used for a variety of call handling and data entry purposes. In many cases, the display above these keys will give a hint about which of these keys to use. Finally, there are connectors and switches on the side and back of the console that once set correctly should not be touched again. On the left side of the console is a small jack for connecting the handset cord. Use this connector if you add a standard third-party headset to the console. Adjacent to this jack, you will see a small hole that accepts a flathead screwdriver. The slotted potentiometer in the hole is used to adjust the contrast of the small console display. The display should be easily viewable as shipped from the factory. If adjustment is needed, no further or regular adjustment should be required. On the back of the console, you will see a dip switch and two jacks. The dip switch is used by your phone suite installer to indicate how the console is being used, but in almost all cases the switches should be set as shown here. The larger of the two jacks is for the cable that connects the console to the phone suite cabinet. The console must be connected correctly to the cabinet using this jack in order for it to operate. This is not typically something you can do yourself. Your certified phone suite installer will have installed this cable for you. Next to this jack is a smaller jack a spare connector that can be used to attach a phone to the console as a backup handset. Use this only when no other console handset option is available. Be sure to change the dip switches to the appropriate settings. Like most hotel phone system consoles, the handset cradle does not have a hook switch. The command buttons are used to complete or end the conversation. Because of this, you can set the handset down anywhere, but the cradle is certainly convenient. The busy lamp field is eight rows of ten lights which show at a glance up to 64 guests, phones, and up to 16 lines, also referred to as trunks, from the phone company. The rows can be labeled by your certified phone suite installer to better match the room numbering in your hotel. The phones represented by the lamps in the first six rows plus four lamps on the seventh row are off if that phone is not in use. When it's solid, it indicates the phone is in use. When blinking, the lamp indicates that the message indicator on that phone has been turned on by the guest setting or by the voicemail system. The 16 trunk lamps are on the bottom two rows and are labeled 1 through 16. Like the phone lamps, these lamps are off when the trunk is idle and on solid when the trunk is in use. At any time, a quick look at the trunk lamps gives an idea of how many lines are in use at that moment. But unlike the phone lamps, a blinking trunk lamp is an indication that there is something wrong with that line from the phone company and your certified phone suite reseller should be contacted to provide troubleshooting. The guest function buttons are used to confirm or change any of the most common guest or phone settings such as checked in status, dialing permission, wake up calls, and more. Details of these functions are covered in the lesson on basic guest settings and functions. The three buttons on the right side of this area, however, have system functions. The reset console button is used to reset the console without having to unplug it. Just remember to press the D button afterwards. Whenever the console is plugged in or reset, the volume will be at a maximum. Use the volume up and the volume down buttons to adjust the volume. 
Each time either of these buttons is pressed, the current volume level is played briefly. Note that the minimum volume, no sound is heard. The console display is used to provide information about phone calls in process, as well as guest settings. The display changes based on what you're doing with the console at the time. The four call buttons are used to handle up to four simultaneous calls. When on a call, the button that represents your current conversation is lit solid. When a call is on hold, the button will be blinking. Instructions on using these buttons to answer, transfer, and make calls are provided in the next lesson. Basic call handling. The dial pad is a standard telephone dial pad. Remember, however, that this dial pad is also used when changing guest settings, for example, to enter the time of a guest wake-up call. Notice that the bottom right key, sometimes called the pound key or hash key, is also labeled enter. When instructed to press enter during these training sessions, this is the key to press. Finally, the four function buttons to the right of the keypad are used as part of call handling and guest settings, as well as for setting programming options which should be done only by your certified phone suite installer. Which of these buttons to press and when is covered in the following lessons.